Miles, just south of Ashley Ford. Whatever it takes, Montgomery Ward. Now through Saturday at Home Ideas, all mattresses are on sale. Like this Sealy Posturepedic with exclusive inner spring units for comfort and support and an 18-year warranty. Only $149. We challenge you to find a Sealy Posturepedic at this price anywhere. And the Sealy Posture Premium, only $98. Plus, we won't be undersold. When it comes to a great selection of mattresses at great low prices, take a look at Home Ideas. Whatever. Many of you are enjoying Christmas with your families today, and uh, you've exchanged presents already, probably had a very nice Christmas dinner, and that uh, you'll sit down and enjoy uh, the Christmas with the gang here at WWTV. Johnny Carson, Christmas Day, 1950, and it was done right here in this studio from a set that Carson called the Squirrel's Nest. Good evening, I'm Gary Kerr. Tonight at 10.30, Johnny Carson will host The Tonight Show on NBC for the last time. This is where he started, 43 years ago. Carson came here in the spring of 1949. The original application, I was 23, put down all my good qualities. Single. Typing speed, 35 minutes, 35 words a minute. I thought that was very important. And other business experiences said selling. That was the original uh, occupation. He had just graduated from the University of Nebraska. We were just W.O.W. Radio then. A few months later that year, 1949, W.O.W. TV went on the air. Carson had a radio show in the morning and a TV show in the afternoon. He wasn't here long, only a little over two years before leaving to seek fame and fortune in California. But there are a lot of stories. During the next half hour, Carson himself and some of the people who worked with him here will remember the Omaha years. My name's Johnny Carson, and this program is called The Squirrel's Nest, sometimes family matinee, and uh, sometimes quite a few other things. And a lot of you people are probably watching this show for the first time today with your new Christmas television set, and uh, we hope this program won't let you down, and uh, frankly, uh, we know it will. If you're looking for a great time on Memorial Day, I've got the answer. Hello everybody, I'm Dave Weber, inviting you to come down to Rosenblatt Stadium at 6.05 on Memorial Day as Channel 6 presents the Game of the Year, the Kansas City Royals exhibition game with our own Omaha Royals. You'll see all the top Kansas City stars, plus you can get one of these. Imagine seeing the Kansas City Royals, having a great time at the stadium, and getting one of these? I'm excited. See you Monday Memorial Day right here at Rosenblatt. Sponsored by Channel 6 for the Heartland, WOWT. What do you say? What do you say? Like a pack mule or uh, one of them oxen. That's how I'm working this morning. By 11 o'clock, forget about it. I'm thinking Whopper at Burger King. That juicy flame broil burger with all the melted cheese, with the onions, the lettuce, and tomato. Bada boom, bada bin. It's a beautiful thing. Get a delicious Whopper combo meal. A flame broiled Whopper medium drink and medium fries for just $2.99. Only at Burger King now. Your way right away at Burger King now. Johnny Carson was hired by W.O.W. as a staff announcer, but he was soon much more than that. For one thing, W.O.W. radio was having some problems. Well, we were down in the mud, and that's the reason that uh, Carson got the special treatment, you know. Uh, you was special. Uh, our ratings were down in the mud. Yeah. Merrill Workhoven was chief announcer and Carson's immediate supervisor. Special treatment meant, among other things, providing Carson with Percy Ziegler, an engineer who has since died. Percy Ziegler came up with the sound effects to complement Carson's comedy on his morning radio show. One of Carson's zaniest radio annex was when he did his broadcast from right up there, the edge of the Douglas County Courthouse. There were a lot of pigeons up there, too, but they were making a terrible mess, and the powers that be were determined to get rid of them. Carson decided to take the side of the pigeons. And he's sitting there swinging his legs back and forth on that. <laughs> and so I went up and I would ask the pigeons how they felt about this uh, attempt to remove them. And Percy would play the cooey and I would interpret what they said, that they were very saddened at the fact that the city government would try to move them off a public building. And uh, he says, now here's uh, uh, Mrs. Pigeon here. And uh, he said, uh, 
He said, I, I, he said, I want to get your opinion. And he says, well, he said, uh, uh, you're married, of course, yeah, and, and, uh, and you have, uh, oh, I see. He says, oh, yeah. I said, well, he says, here, sit down. <laughs> you know, making it out that the pigeon was pregnant, you know, and, uh, he was solicitous about her <laughs> the pregnant pigeon he was interviewing. Johnny Carson remembered the pigeon incident and many others during an interview about his Omaha years, an interview on The Tonight Show set in 1984 by Omaha television producer Arno Grafton. We had a lot of fun with it for about a week, and every morning I would be up on top of the building. People would be wondering what the hell was going on. And uh, finally we had this offering, we got, we got the pigeons at home. He jolly well, that could be the most famous thing he did while he was here. And then there was his salary. It wasn't much, and Carson was always making fun of it on radio and off. His check wasn't very large. You can imagine 50 or $60 a week. So when he saw me coming, he would say, uh, well, this is the day the eagle flies, and here's Bill Templin with my check again. <laughs> Things like that. He, he would do that right on the air. As office manager, Bill Templin handed out the checks and made sure any personal expenses that employees had billed to the station were paid in full. I remember getting a, a bill at the end of the month from, from the station for something like 20 cents for a phone call. I had made to Council Bluff, and they wanted to be reimbursed. Calls to Council Bluffs back then were long-distance calls, and Templin remembers parts of the story a little differently. Johnny had many friends and acquaintances and uh, made several calls to Council Bluffs every month. Uh, sometimes, as I recall, the bill would amount to $1.50 or $2 for his long-distance calls. It seemed very important, so I went to the, I think the Douglas County Bank. It was right across the street, and I went over and I hired a uniformed officer with gun, and I said, please uh, get a bag put 20 pennies in it. I don't remember anything about a bank. I do remember the uh, Samartic Armor Car Service delivering this money. I, I remember vividly that it was in pennies. I had him march up, gun drawn, taking his 20 cents back to the uh, controller, I guess, of WOW to, uh, to take care of this bill. So we got a lot of press out of that. Frank Fogarty was station manager at the time, and even he felt the sting of Carson's comedy on the air, with the help of Percy Ziegler when it came to salary. Apparently, I'd gone to Mr. Fogarty with my paycheck, and I said, you want to see something funny? And I opened it, and I showed it to him, and all you heard it was this cackling laugh for about 15 seconds. And then another morning, I opened my paycheck on the air, and I said, let's see how much I got this week. And I had maybe three or four coins, and all you heard was just maybe 20 or 30 cents clanking out on the table. Driving nuts for this kind of stuff. Uh, I guess we did that because we thought we all deserved more money for the, the strange hours we worked. And the long hours that he put in, putting together his jokes and routines. Well, uh, he was a hard worker. Val Hansen was one of the people who worked with Carson then. I mean, I, I could go down there in the morning and he'd be on duty. And I'd go back there at noon and he'd be on duty. And sometimes in the evening I'd fill in for Chuck Thomas and the weather and Carson would still be there. He, he worked hard on his material. It wasn't something that he just pulled out of the air. He, he worked very hard at it. In May 1950, after Carson had been there for a year, he got a whopping $2.50 a week raise. It was a salary that prompted him to look elsewhere, to move from the state where he was born and raised. He had married for the first time Jody Walcott of North Platte, and there was a child. He said, I, I love being here with my folks and so on. But he said, also, I would like to have the kind of income where you could live in a decent house and drive a decent car. And he said, I don't see how I'm ever going to make enough money here to do it. Somebody says, what do you think you should have to be in broadcasting? And I said, an outside source of income. The management of WOW Radio was sorry to see him go. It took uh, quite a while. And then the thing began to go, his ratings started going up. And then they started going up by leaps and bounds. I mean, you know, like doubling. And so he was number one when he left the station. Carson's antics were not just on radio. When we come back, his Omaha years on television. 
face to face for the first time. Got it. And the last. We have no weapons of any kind. Sigourney Weaver. Is to die. Alien 3. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Hundreds of reasons to detect cancer early. You have the best one of all. Get the facts. Call for a free guide. Your Omaha area Chevy dealers have an important bulletin about storms. Wait, not those storms, these storms. Announcing 1250 cash back on sporty Geo Storms. Equipped with standard driver's side airbag, AM FM stereo, plus more horsepower and better mileage than Plymouth Laser. Don't miss your chance to save 1250 big bucks on Geo Storms. This is one storm you can really play in. See your Omaha area Chevy dealer today. Nice thing about radio, you talk to any people the early day, you could show up on radio from a very long night and nobody saw you. Uh, you could fake it pretty good, you could feel terrible, you might look pretty bad, but all they heard was a voice. But on television, there you were. We, we just really learned by uh, uh, almost the seat of your pants. People would just go in and they'd roll the camera out and we were on the air. Johnny Carson and television arrived on the scene at the same time. Back then, we were just W.O.W. television. The T was added to our name in the mid-1970s. Just a few months after he came here, in the spring of 1949, W.O.W. television went on the air. Those tuned in can now see the W.O.W. Uh, test pattern on the air. There were just a few TV sets out there in the beginning, and the network provided very little programming to start out with, so the time was filled with locally produced shows, like Carson's Squirrel's Nest. This is WOW-TV, Channel 6, Omaha, Nebraska. The following are live studio telecasts. It had to be live. The technology to videotape shows and play them back later didn't come along for several years. And we went on the air, Monday at 4. If you ask me now what we did, I'm not sure we did anything to survive. We had turtle races, uh, one of our more exciting things. Uh, because with turtle races, you see, you could kill a lot of time. And uh, we had an invited studio, not an invited studio audience, probably a forced audience. We went out and corralled people off the street. We set them on folding chairs uh, in the studio. And we started. We opened up and uh, did anything and everything we could think of. We did interviews. We tried to tell some jokes. The trick, of course, was just to try to find things to do each day. You know, you, you just experimented all the time. You stole from anybody. You tried anything. We pointed the cameras, I think, out in the streets, and we walked down the halls, and we interviewed people. And... I'll tell you what you do. Uh, nice tree, one, isn't that a beautiful thing? I want to tell the people about that. Uh, we went shopping late, and most of the nice trees were picked over. And uh, we were able to get this one at a very nice bargain and a substantial saving. Uh, that's our tree today. A little weak, a uh, branch or two missing here, but uh, it still conveys the Christmas spirit, we think. Is that right? If you're wondering why we keep coming back to that Christmas show, it's because that's all we've got. The only video we have of Carson's program from those years. That day it was decided to put the program on film at the same time it was being broadcast live. Films were also made of other W.O.W. TV personalities, and at one time or another, most of them were the targets of Carson's humor. I would like to remind you that we meet here in the kitchen every afternoon at 3.30. The late Martha Bolson. She had a cooking show, and Martha's ingredients had to be fresh. I think she had a recipe for fresh eggs. 
And I said, we're talking fresh. And I'd stashed a chicken underneath her cabinet or something. And I reached in and grabbed the chicken and pulled out the eggs. And I says, is this fresh enough? And she came, she came unglued. We had a lot of fun. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our grassroots program. Certainly nice to have you with us today. And on the farm topics, we lead off with the statement about the hog situation. Mel Hanson, the station's farm director, also had a garden show in the evening. And as a staff announcer one evening, Carson introduced his program. You know, he said, here's Mel Hanson in his own backyard. He came out of the announce booth. He walked between myself and the camera, which bothered me a little bit. And then he went over to Martha Bolson's kitchen. We set the clock ahead about three, three minutes. So when the time came for his show and the floor manager gave him the cue, he thought he was on the air. And uh, proceeded to go into her kitchen and open the drawers and drop pots and pans on the concrete floor, which made a horrible noise. Then he started to swear. Then we started to say things that I couldn't say here. And we drove him crazy because he thought all of this was going out in the air. And pretty soon it became a shouting match and terrible things were said back and forth. And he just almost dissolved. Everybody in the studio knew exactly what was happening but me. And finally we had to tell him. So when he finally did go on the air, he was almost out of it by then. Well, sure I was, yeah. By the time I, uh, he says three minutes, I think it was more like ten minutes. <laughs> but now, yeah, I had a heck of a time that half hour show. That was a bad one. I never, I'll never forget it. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Yesterday is 12.15, and time once again for you... Don Keogh, the host of Coffee Counter, is now international president of Coca-Cola. After TV came to Omaha, W.O.W. began broadcasting Cornhusker football games. And for one of those games, Keogh did the play-by-play, -play and Johnny Carson did the color commentary. And I've often thought, how much would you have to pay today to get the president of Coca-Cola International and Johnny Carson to do a football game for you now. Carson, the homemaker. He would sponsor contests on the air, and the housewife that won got him as the prize to clean her house. Carson, the ventriloquist. Ventriloquism, comedy, magic, all part of his show. Johnny really got his start in show business as a magician and uh, put himself through college doing shows. Even when he worked at WOW Radio and TV, he did magic shows on the side. Pete Petrashek also worked at W.O.W. when Carson was here. I was, since I was a kid, you know, doing magic and ventriloquism on a stage. So um, being in front of audiences such visually didn't particularly bother me. And Johnny did uh, a good mimic of Jack Benny. You know, Jack's old uh, way of going, well, and holding his elbow like that. And Johnny loved to do that. Johnny. Loved the old-time comedians, Jack Benny and Fred Allen. I still do things and have done things on The Tonight Show. We did a thing here one night with Ed called Homework School of the Air. Does that ring a bell? Right. I did it on W.O.W. in 1949. I would have these uh, purported questions sent in by young kids to help them with their homework. And Worky would come in and read the questions, and I played Professor so-and-so and would answer them. Ed and I did it here a couple of years ago. I put on a hat, had a bell, we put a sign here and said, Homework School of the Air. The comedy in his 1950 Christmas show, like everything else he did, was well planned. When he invited members of the technical staff to help decorate the tree, they knew exactly what they were supposed to do. That's it. Now you got it. This is nice and straight. Now be careful. Don't wait a minute. These guys don't mind the white hat. Now, Al. No, wait. Now, 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 wait. What has your bank done for you lately? 
My bank? <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> it's back. The Norwest Checking Challenge 2. We're so sure we can offer you a better checking account. We'll give you $20 to open a Norwest checking account. Did you say 20? If you don't, we'll give you a compact disc or cassette tape just for try. Yeah, Jane, about Saturday night. <laughs> Challenge a Norwest banker today. Either way, you can't lose. Don't miss it. It's Montgomery Ward's lowest prices of the season sale. We not only lowered our prices, we're giving instant discounts of $20 to $150 on top of that. You can't miss it. Lowest prices store-wide. Laser 386 computer with monitor, $8.99. You can't miss it. All the leading brands, Sony, Panasonic, IBM, Maytag. GE refrigerator, $348. Lazy Boy recliner, $299. Montgomery Ward lowest prices of the season sale, plus instant discounts. Whatever. June is going to be one hot month on ESPN. June heats up on ESPN. of reasons to reduce your risk of cancer you have the best one of all get the facts call for a free guide one trip Carson made back to Omaha was in the early 1970s for the grand opening of here's Johnny's what was to have been a chain of restaurants there were two in Omaha but didn't last long Carson's boyhood home in Norfolk. This is where he grew up. Both his parents, H.L. and Ruth Carson, have died. The section of Highway 81 that runs past it has been renamed in his honor. In 1981, the house became a motion picture set for a few days for a TV movie called Johnny Comes Home. This was one of several times he's been back, and Carson has been generous to his hometown. He has given $650,000 for a regional radiation center, a cancer treatment facility at a local hospital, and more recently, $600,000 for a new high school theater. In high school, Carson performed in plays and musicals and did his magic as the great Carsoni. He was friendly with everybody, but he had just a few friends. He didn't want to have be a, uh, close to a whole lot of people, and he kept that. Merrill Workhoven is one of those few friends. They've gotten together on those occasions when Carson has come back here and at Carson's home in California. Workhoven still has the car that Carson gave him in 1978. Carson had learned that Workhoven, on a trip to California that year, had all kinds of problems with the car he drove out. So Carson surprised him with a brand new Buick Skylark. So he put his hand out, and so I held out my hand. And he dropped a set of car keys in it, and I didn't tumble. I thought, this guy is nuts. What do I want with a set of car keys? You know, what do I want with that? And I was, look, must have looked real puzzled, and then he said, and there's the car that goes with it right over there. Workhoven was along for that 1984 interview of Carson about his Omaha years. Merrill tells me that uh, he taught you a little bit. I don't believe Merrill. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was a great help. I thought he had one. He still does. He's got that voice that sounds like it comes out of a cave. <laughs> Way down there, I used to try to emulate him because he had that sonar. And you know, all radio announcers sit like this when they talk, because they, you, this way you can hear the voice, like talking in the shower. You get that reverberation. And he may have been kidding me. I never said. I never did that in my life. Never did what? Put my ear hand up by my ear so I could hear my voice. Never. Merrill had this vibrato. He, he would say, "My time is up. Thank you for yours." I said, "Wow, that's a great voice." My time is up. Thank you for yours. I, I don't know why he liked me. I know why I liked him. He was cooperative. He was uh, doing a hell of a good job. Doing a hell of a good job back then meant, just as it does today, producing a lot of viewers and listeners for your station. People were calling their friends 
saying, hey, uh, you ought to listen to W.O.W. in the morning. They got a guy there who's really funny. And uh, see, he, he was just uh, blossoming, you know, just expanding, tremendous. And on television, Carson was perfecting his routines, here getting the help of the station's technical staff in a rendition of Jingle Bells. <laughs> Second, Bob, I want to get a step. Okay, fellas? Okay. Jingle bell. Okay. Wait a minute. Al, would you step out a little bit? Sigh. Yes, sir. This is kind of the high part of the show, Sigh. Why don't you fellas to sing Jingle Bell to all the folks at home who have a nice Christmas? And uh, everybody has to sing together. So, on the downbeat. That's your right, right there. Right. Well, okay, I'll thank Grace. I'll try. Sure, it'll rehearse a little bit, no? <coughs> Tonight at 10.30 here on Channel 6, an era will end. An era that began 43 years ago in this studio. I'm Gary Kerr. Good evening. Right now, we hope things are going to be better. So we hope you'll keep watching the program. We hope you've had a Merry Christmas. You'll drop back and see us Wednesday on Family Matinee and uh, stay with the station all the time. Incidentally, this program today was filmed, and our cameraman, who didn't get to be on the show, uh, was Murph Murray. Uh, Murph's standing right out there now. Murph, you did a nice job. We'll wait and see. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday on the Squirrel's Nest. Until then, this is Johnny Carson saying goodbye, everyone. This is Channel 6 for the Heartland. W-O-W-T, Omaha.